Hello, my name is Sebastian Rodriguez. I work as product manager in Polygon. And today I'd like to talk about something very important to understand cell sovereign identities. It's what we call the triangle of trust. I'd like to start, to start by looking at this side of the board and thinking about these actors, e-commerce applications, service providers, Web3 applications, and how they need at some point to trust our identities, our digital identities. And the num number of things that they cannot do uh, because they don't have enough trust in our identity online. Think about the things you can do in the real world. You can go to a bank, you can ask for a loan, you can present your ID, and they will trust the entire process. You can vote in a general election uh, because they know that you are only voting once and you know that they know that they are a human being, right? Uh, all these things are difficult in the digital world because we, not really, we cannot really trust our identities. An identity in the internet is nothing more than an email, and we don't know who is behind that. Is there a way that we can improve that? Is there a way that we can provide our identities with trust? And the answer is yes, we can rely on issuers. The issuers are special entities that operate both in the real and the digital world, and they are considered to be trustable. They, they have a reputation. People generally trust when they say something about an individual. People trust when a bank or a government or a university says something about a person in the real world. So how can we transfer this trust for the online version of these institutions to our digital identities? Well, this is the role of the verifiable credentials. In the SSI architecture that follows the verifier credentials standards, these institutions can issue credentials to an identity holder. These credentials, and following the principles of SSI that say that the identity holder needs to be in control of their identity, they are stored in a wallet. In the same wallet, we will have all our credentials from our bank, our woman, university, etc. And then we will be able to use these credentials to the verifiers. The reason why the verifiers now will trust our identity. First, there is a real trust from issuers to verifiers in the real world. The verifier chooses to trust a certain bank a certain government, a certain university. So it's real world trust. The second reason why verified your credentials are a good source of trust is because there are cryptographic rules and protocols governing the entire architecture and certifying that nothing has been tampered or changed uh, between the issuance and the verification. This triangle of trust, where the trust is moved from the issuers to the verifiers is a key idea of self-sovereign identities. The second pillar is the decision that the identity holder will be in control of these credentials. These credentials are stored in the identity holder's wallet. And the identity holder, the individual keeping these credentials, will decide how much they share with each one of these verifiers. Once we understand this triangle of trust, we have uh, a clear view of why self-serving identities enable new ways of doing businesses online. Once we have trusted identities, we can operate online in the same ways we can operate in the real world, allowing for new business cases, new use cases, new possibilities. And that is the real power of these uh, self-serving identities. It's about privacy, it's about user control of their data, but most important is about the potential in user experience and new business models. Thank you.